How are we doing guys? Welcome back to a new video. Hope you're all doing really well. So in today's video, I've got 10 tips that can help you speed up your workflow inside Premiere Pro. All right, so the first tip I wanna give is using the master tab inside the Lumetri color panel instead of color correcting each individual clip individually. And I'll quickly show you what I mean by that. So I've got a talking head clip here segment that's been cut up to take out all the parts that I didn't want, all the silent parts, all the mistakes. That's been cut up all along the timeline. So when I first started editing, the obvious thing that I used to do was select the clip, make my color adjustment, go to the effects, take the effect, and then go along the timeline to all the clips that I wanted that to affect and then paste them on like so. So then it's affecting all the clips, which yeah, it works and you know, it's fine, but a much quicker way of doing that is if I command Z and go back, selecting one of those cuts and in the Lumetri color panel, instead of going, instead of being in this section here where it says final, go to the master, make your color correction. And as you can see, all the clips have now have a little red line underneath, which what that means is that it's affected the master clip, which means that it's color graded that entire clip c0001.mp4 all along everywhere that will be on the timeline it will be color corrected as i just color corrected it in the master and the great thing about that is now if i do want to make a color adjustment um, i can just go straight into that master make an adjustment and it will affect all the other talking head um, clips or talking head cuts that I, I had in this sequence and rather than before where i used to have to then make an adjustment delete all the color grade from all the other clips and copy the new color grade on. This way I can just literally go straight into the master tab, make my adjustments and it will affect the whole clip and that is a lifesaver. And that obviously works for other effects as well. So if you come up here into the main effects controls, you, you will see you've got the same thing over here where you've got master and final. So you can be adding your normal effects that you wanted to add you can actually just be adding them straight into the master tab and it will be affecting the whole clip rather than you having to do each individual cut within that within that um, clip. So the next tip I've got is a similar effect, but this time it's adding effects to the whole entire audio track rather than just the individual selections or cuts of the audio track, similar to what we just did with the master effect in the visuals. You can do the same thing within audio. So what I mean by that, go up to your window and you select audio track mixer you'll see up here in your source monitor is brought you up here to the audio track mixer. And what you can do up here is you can add effects to the individual tracks. So rather than having to select and copy and paste uh, effects, audio effects onto all of these cuts, again, you can just choose, okay, A4, audio track four. So one, two, three, four, and you can start to apply effects within here. So for example, if I wanted to add reverb studio reverb to all of this track i can just go in here and do that and then make my um, adjustments to the studio reverb and that will affect the whole of this track for rather than me having to select all the cuts and copy the effect on and again you might think that might not save you a lot of time because selecting all the cuts and pasting an effect takes you no time at all but it's the same thing again where if you want to make some adjustments such as you want to make an adjustment to the reverb you would have to make that adjustment, copy it, delete all the adjustments from the rest of the cuts and then paste it on. And then these kind of things, they can sometimes start to get confusing. You miss one of the cuts for whatever reason and you double apply the reverb without realizing and then you've exported and then later on you realize that one of the cuts has more reverb than you wanted. Going back, trying to find everything. These things have affected me before and knowing these little shortcuts like that, like affecting the whole track with within one change, it really, really, can be a lifesaver in some instances. So the next tip I've got is with regards to using the audio time units. So I'll show you what I mean by that. If you go in to your audio here and you go as far in as you can, and you'll see that obviously you can go one frame at a time, even though you're zoomed in as much as possible within that frame, you can see that there's quite a few beats within that little section. So to get even more specific, you can right click on your toolbar up here and, sh and select audio show audio time units and now what you can do is get e go in even further and you can really 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 isolate every single beat that you could possibly want 
And this is great if you know, you're know you editing dialogue and let's say the person who's talking is talking really quick, which happens sometimes, and you need to make a cut somewhere. Um, this is great for being able to get in there and really, really, really get specific and nail off a cut at a certain dialogue point. Or if you're doing a music video, for example, and you really, really need to be editing to a certain beat, um, and you might be missing off that beat within the vis normal visual time unit, but if you go to the audio time unit, you can be hitting that beat a lot, lot more cleaner. So that's where this can, you know, this little trick really shines. And if you don't want to have it, you can easily just right click and click it off and you go back to your normal visual time unit. But yeah, that's another really good tip that I found. So tip number four is using two timelines to edit. So I'll show you again what I mean by that. If you come here and you've got your selects that you want to be using your b-roll selects for example um, over here in one sequence and then you've got your main sequence over here rather than flicking between those two copying something and then pasting it and then going back for example back and forth like that a better way to do it is to just grab one of your timelines and just bring it down to the bottom and now what you have is a double timeline like this where you can see both of them and you can stretch this up a bit further and now you can be dragging down your selects like that still keeping them there in your select folder but then yeah you can just be selecting dragging them down and everything's more visual and you can see everything rather than flicking off from one to the other getting lost sometimes within your timeline so tip number five is to add all your audio constant power transitions on your timeline all in one go rather than having to go in between each clip individually so i'll show you again what i mean by that so for example here i've got all my talking head audio cut up as i want and there's a lot of sort of like abrupt jump cuts in there where you know maybe i haven't taken enough of a pause in between and i want to kind of smooth all these out a little bit by doing so by right clicking i can just apply the full transition and it just smooths out those little cuts in between each of the audio cuts but having to go through and do all that individually like is something that i used to do but it's ridiculous but there's actually a, a quicker way of doing it so, so what you want to do is you want to make sure you go to edit preferences then timeline make sure that audio transition default dur duration is set at two frames press ok on that and then select all those clips that you want to add the transition to and then just pr press ctrl shift d and then when you go in and zoom in you'll see that all those clips on that um, all those clips that were selected have now got audio transitions put in between each of them and that literally took you like two seconds to do whereas before it could take you like minutes so again another good little time saving tip there so the next tip is a simple one it's using the alt key to duplicate your clip whereas before you might have to copy lock the layer and then paste above your new duplicate this way is a lot quicker you can basically just select your clip hold down alt on your keyboard and just drag up and you can do that as many times as you want and you've got a duplicate of your clip so that's another little quick one that i learned along the way another quick one is using n on your keyboard to roll in between clips so whereas before i would drag back a clip and then drag the other one to meet it which again doesn't take very long at all doesn't seem like it takes that long but instead of having to adjust the two clips like that individually you can just press n on your keyboard and then just roll the clips like so without having to go to each one and again it's one of those things where it just doesn't seem like it's worth the trouble but over time when you're editing and you're doing a long project having these little things like that it just makes the editing process like slightly more enjoyable and uh, feels like it flows a bit more so next tip I've got for you is using the track select forward and track select back tool within Adobe Premiere Pro which will allow you to select all the clips from a certain point forward and all the clips from a certain point backwards which again doesn't seem like a massive deal but I've had times where I have missed off clips because I've tried to go in with my mouse and delicately try to select clips 
like this in this sort of method but a much quicker method and something that you should probably get into using is this little tool over here so you can actually just access it by pressing a on your keyboard going to a point you want and then selecting forward and it's much much quicker and you can do the same thing by selecting shift a and it will allow you to to select backwards if you wanted to isolate just one of these tracks rather than doing all of them you can again just press shift a and if you keep the shift button held down it will allow you to just select one of the tracks and then if you take your hand your finger off the shift it will select all the tracks back on the shift and you can select individual and again if you want to go forward just press a same thing selecting everything forward hold down the shift and you can start to select individual tracks for everything that's going forward at a certain point so the next tip i've got for you is not necessarily a time saving tip but i thought i'd throw it in anyway because i find it quite useful is to use a low pass filter on your background audio so basically what this will do is if you apply a low pass filter and you put it to a certain point such as i've got it on this track as 455 hertz what it will normally be at is 23,770 hertz but i have it yeah around 450 or whatever you feel like it should be so basically what it's doing is it will just only let the sort of bass frequencies come through rather than the higher treble frequencies that can sometimes mix in with your voice and make it harder for the audience to maybe hear what you're saying this will only allow the, the lower end bass frequencies to come in so it'll help a lot more with making your voice sound clear uh, so the final tip that i've got for you is creating an export preset which is a really good little time saving thing to have um, just so that every time that you do export a video you're not having to go through all the settings again you can literally press one button and then start your export and the way you do that is go into file export so when it comes up here on your media and you've got everything the way you like it to be for example let's say that's how i want everything to be looking all you need to do is just click on this little save preset icon and then you can just call it whatever you want press ok and then from now on in the future if you just wanted to when you come into export you can literally just press that preset everything will be set the way you want it to be and then you can just queue or export as you want all right guys so that's my 10 tips to help you improve your adobe premiere pro workflow i hope it did help you out please do subscribe with the bell icon clicked so that you do get notified when i upload a future video and have a great rest of your day and i'll see you in the next video take care